It was once said that Hitler shook the trees and America picked up the apples. Musicians, writers, and artists, many of whom came here to Los Angeles to begin a new life. But the story wasn't that simple. Exile created a special form of life for which few were prepared, turning Hollywood of the 1930s and 40s into a sort of palm tree purgatory. Some of the exiles were famous, others never had their chance. But all of them wrote letters and kept journals in which they confided their feelings about being caught between two worlds. I went to see the general secretary of the Salzburg Festival and the director of the Vienna Opera. And I presented myself, you have treated me very kindly. Can I expect to be hired by the Vienna Opera? Is there going to be a vacancy? And if so, he said, Lansdorf, if you come to me one of these days and the rosary will hang out of your pocket, uh, I may be able to engage you. And I said, uh, Dr. Kerber, the price is a little bit too high for me. I don't think I can afford that. Schoenberg said he never saw so many people from Vienna as he saw in Los Angeles. They're all bunched together in these elegant places from Santa Monica to Beverly Hills. I had never seen Hollywood before. There was a garden, there was a swimming pool and a tennis court and those beautiful girls played ball, tennis, women swam in the thing. I said, that's Hollywood. Fabulous. So one day for lunch, I came out there and there was a private dining room and some gentleman standing around having a cocktail. And somebody says, let's sit down. And my host said, you sit here. I sat down, I don't believe it till today. I looked to my left, there's Clark Gable. Look to the right, there's Spencer Tracy. That if my friends in Berlin could only see me now. It's very important to remember that through that whole period, there was a pretty much as tight as possible an embargo on Jews coming to America. The, the, the State Department was filled with anti-Semites. And Roosevelt, for his part, did not want to upset the basically isolationist Americans as he tried to gradually move them into the war. There was a quota for Eastern Europeans and Central Europeans in the United States. And between 1933 and 1945, that quota went unfilled. Was ist denn aber nun eigentlich die Tragik der Emigration? Die Tragik der Emigration sind ja nicht die veränderten Berufsumstände oder die täglichen Schwierigkeiten im Beruf. Auch die kann man immer überwinden. Die Tragik besteht in etwas ganz anderem. Des deutschen Dichters Freiherr Börjes von Münchhausen, das er vor der Emigration geschrieben hatte und das hieß der Auslander. Und die letzten zwei Zeilen dieses Gedichtes heißen, und wenn er dann nach Hause kommt, ist er daheim ein fremder Mann. Das, glaube ich, ist die Tragik der Emigration.